So before we, we uh, get into the study of New Jerusalem, um, uh, let me uh, remind you one thing that, you know, majority of the, of the Bible teachers, they are avoiding the elaborated teaching of these chapters only because they are not able to make a clear conclusion about these kinds of topics. Okay, so we are going to study about the New Jerusalem, the city of New Jerusalem and all those things. But we understand that majority of the Bible scholars or Bible teachers, they are not, I mean, taking all these portions and uh, they are not, I mean, uh, making a clear conclusion for all those things because uh, it is not easy, you know? This is, a, this, is a, this is actually a revelation or a vision. This is a revelation or a vision. Um, uh, so uh, for us, it's, it's not easy to interpret the revelations uh, which uh, uh, Apostle John received and strongly concluding that the New Jerusalem is going to be like this. Okay, so, you know, majority of the uh, uh, Bible scholars are silent about all these things. Okay, they are silent about all these things. We have to understand that. You know, we will be studying about characteristics of the New Jerusalem, but at the same time, just to understand one thing, the majority of the Bible scholars, they are silent about many of the controversial topics of the book of Revelation. They don't say anything about that because they understand that it is a controversial topic. And if we, if we start to study about all those things, there is no conclusion for that because we cannot understand with our uh, limited uh, intellectual capacity. Okay, but as for me, I'm trying to give you a little more ideas or a little more information about many of the controversial uh, topics uh, which may answer your questions and uh, uh, may clear your I mean, confusions, okay? Moreover, about uh, many of the things and events, we are, uh, uh, we are able to assume uh, something. We cannot uh, make a clear conclusion, but we are just uh, assuming something about everything. But um, I mean, no worries that the future events will never affect your uh, salvation. So just understanding the things, okay? That's all we can do, man. So these all things and studying all these things or understanding very clearly about the future events will not affect your salvation because you are already saved, okay? When you are saved, I mean, you will be there in heaven if you are, I mean, leading a true Christian life, okay? So it will not affect you. The, the things which is going to happen in the future will not affect your salvation now, okay? So there is no meaning in uh, uh, going uh, uh, after all those things. Now we will come to the uh, different characteristics of uh, the New Jerusalem, which is written in Revelation chapter 21 uh, and also uh, chapter 22 uh, verses one to five, okay? So uh, we are not going to read all those portions, but we will uh, try to understand. And uh, only a few things are written. That means on the, the points are there at the same time. Um, we have no time to explain all the characteristics of the New Jerusalem or specialities of the New Jerusalem or the, everything that we are going to experience in, uh, in the New Jerusalem. But we will be focusing uh, on some of the, some of the main... Yeah, uh, all of you can uh, mute yourself now. So my device only will be unmuted. Okay, you can you can all mute. Okay, so there are many characteristics of the New Jerusalem in chapter twenty-one and also in twenty-two. Okay, the first one is the New Jerusalem city is beautiful. The New Jerusalem city is beautiful. Okay, like what? Like a bride adorned for her husband. In verse two, you can read that. Okay, so be, it is very beautiful, like a bride adorned for her husband. Okay, and this is a city descended from heaven. So this new Jerusalem city is descending from or coming down from heaven. Okay, and thirdly, this is a hanging city. This is a hanging city. That means it seems that this city is coming down from heaven and hanging between the new earth and new heaven. We know that this city is coming down while the new heaven and the new earth is already formed. Okay, so the new heaven and the new earth is already existing. At the same time, this city of Jerusalem, new city of Jerusalem is coming down from heaven and it's just like a hanging city. 
it's just like a hanging city. Some, you know, some people argue that uh, uh, this city is going to be established as an actual or as a physical visible city, uh, just like the something like you know Sacramento or the city or New York City or Texas City or something like that. Okay, so there are people arguing that this city, the the New Jerusalem city, is going to be established as an actual or physical visible city, just like all these cities. Okay, because in uh, verses 16 and 17, uh, you can see that uh, there is there are some measurements which is written about the new city of Jerusalem. Let us read that verses maybe 16 and uh, 17. Yeah, 21 verses 16 and 17. Uh, please read. Yeah, it's, are you already? Yeah. I'm ready. The city lies four square in the length, the same as its width. And he measured the city with his rod, 12,000 stadia. Its length and width and height are equal. He also measured, measured its wall, 144 cubits of human measurement, which is also an angel's measurement. Okay, so why some of the people are believing that this is an actual city? The reason is there in verses 16 and 17. What is that? You can see there that the literal measurement of the city, the literal measurement of the city. You know, at the same time, some people argue that the city is going to be, uh, be as, a, as a place where we can experience uh, the so-called spiritual blessings which is offered for his people in Bible. So in Bible, you can see there are many uh, different types of uh, uh, spiritual blessings are offered for the Christian people, for the, for the believers, okay? So some of the people, those who are arguing that, this city is going to be as a place where we can experience all the spiritual blessings in a spiritual way. Okay, so that is what uh, I mean, some of the people believe. Uh, actually, I am not planning to make a conclusion uh, for uh, for uh, these arguments because I am uh, pretty sure that uh, this is uh, actually a secret or mystical thing uh, for our uh, limited understanding to comprehend uh, with all these things okay so it's it's not easy to understand all those things which is going to happen in the future so let us not spend much time for knowing all those things rather uh, let us uh, experience this as we get into the city man so we will be experiencing all those things in the in the city when we reach there okay so the next speciality of this uh, uh, city is it is compared with the bride of christ or the saints of god it is compared with the bride of Christ. That's what uh, uh, Cedric said. Okay, so uh, whatever the Justin said uh, and Aksa said, we are coming um, coming forward to this. And Cedric said that is this is compared with the bride of Christ and the saints of God. Okay, so that's the same thing that uh, a Bible in in Apostle Paul uh, in Ephesians chapter five verse twenty seven. He is, he is very clearly saying that about the body of Christ is very clean and the body of Christ is very holy. Okay, so it says that so uh, uh, this uh, what is that 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 the, he might present the church to himself in splendor without a spot or 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 wrinkle or any such thing that she might be she might be holy and without blemish. So here you can see that the church is mentioned as a she. The church is mentioned as a she, okay? So there is no difference between he or she. I mean, whoever is believing in Jesus Christ, they are, I mean, they will be going into the heaven. So here we can see that the people, those who are uh, clearing themselves and making holy themselves and preparing for the second coming of Jesus Christ, and they will be raptured from this world, from this earth. And those people are known as the saints of God. But at the same time, this uh, city, the New Jerusalem city, which is coming down from heaven, is now here in 21.7. It is very clearly uh, compared as, uh, as uh, the bride of Jesus Christ, the bride of Jesus Christ. That means the bride of Jesus Christ, the New Testament church, is supposed to be holy in the presence of God before the coming of Christ. It should be, I mean, I mean splendor, and it should be without spot. It should be without wrinkle. Uh, it should be without I mean, blemish and it should be very holy. So that's the reason that this city also is compared with the bride of Jesus Christ or the saints of God. And another thing, the next thing is the physical presence of God. The physical presence of God will be there forever and ever. So we are going to experience the physical 
presence of God. This is very important to understand. That's what we read in that particular verse that, I mean, God will be with his people forever and ever, and he will dwell among them. He will dwell among them. Okay, so that's the reason that we can say that the physical presence of God will be there with the people of God in the New Jerusalem, in the city of New Jerusalem. Okay, and another thing is in chapter 21, verse 4. There we read that there is no tears. Okay, there is no tears. Okay, it is very clear. No, in 21, verse 4, we read that he will wipe away every tear from our eyes and you know when we when we uh, study about this point there are something to understand okay when we say that and when we read here in chapter 21 verse 4 that god will wipe away every tear from our eyes the question is will there any crying or mourning in new jerusalem will there tears in the new jerusalem so it says that I mean, we, we read and we say that there is no crying, there is no weeping, there is no mourning or there is no need of, I mean, uh, uh, tears or something. But here we read that, you know, God will wipe out, wipe away every tear from our eyes. What is the re reason of that? And what is the need of that? Okay. So is there any crying or is there any mourning or is there any tear in New Jerusalem? Or will there tears from the eyes, uh, eyes of God's people there in, in Jerusalem? If there is tears, then uh, uh, will it be the tear of uh, grieving or tear of joy? This is the question. Okay, there will be tear, but what 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 kind of tear it will be? Okay, is it uh, the tear tears of uh, the grieving or the tears of joy? Okay, and and why the people are crying there? if everything is comfortable there. So we know that, and we already said that uh, everything is, is new there and everything is comfortable there. There is no other problem. Everything is new and everything is good. There is nothing evil in the, in the city. Then if it is so, then why the people are crying there and why these, uh, uh, the tears of those people are wiped out? Okay, this is the question. The question is, is it that the tears of grieving or the tears of joy. We know that there are many people, we used to cry when we are joyful, right? When we are enjoying something, we used to, the, the tears used to come from our eyes. Okay, so this is the question, why the people are crying there if there is, if everything is comfortable in the new city. Okay, it is not easy to find a single answer for this question, but there are more than one chances that we can assume there will be sometimes tears for various reasons, for various reasons. Like, you know, sometimes, um, uh, uh, suppose when, when we are remembering about the loss of our crown that we had during the time of rewarding ceremony, okay? We may feel that shame, okay? And may, may tears come from our eyes. Okay. For example, you know, we studied about the, uh, the, 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 the uh, rewarding ceremony on a, on a Sunday, right? We studied about that and I preached about that. Okay, what is going to happen there? You no, know, sometimes may, we may lose something. Okay, there are many crowns, but we may be getting one or two or three or something. But then we will be just remembering those things and we are just I mean, crying, oh, I lost that one. Okay, I didn't get that crown. Okay, I was supposed to get that, but I didn't get that, get that crown. I mean, I, I, I work hard and I did many things for the ministry of the Lord. I did many things for the, for the kingdom of God and I spent more money for the, for the kingdom of God and the church, but I lost that crown. So when we remember about that loss, okay, that loss, which is uh, happened in the rewarding ceremony, we may feel very shame. That is very clearly says Bible. You know, we may feel shame and we may, the, the, the tears may come from our eyes. Or when we remember about our uh, relatives or friends and church people who are not with us in heaven. Man, so they heard the gospel and they heard the word of God, but did not believe in Jesus and they disobeyed and they are crying from the lake of fire now. Then when we listen to that and when we think about, oh, our people our relatives or our friends, our church people, those who were with us and those who were, I mean, worshiping with us, 
when they are not in heaven they are not in the city so there there is there is a chance that we may cry there is a chance that we may cry about those people oh they are not here with us okay we are enjoying the presence of god and we are enjoying in the new city all the good things there but our friends or our our relatives or maybe our parents or our, our children or somebody okay who is known to us they are not here with us then we may cry or we may i mean pour our tears from our eyes okay so that may be the reason it could be the tears of joy also because we are privileged to spend our eternity with god forever and ever I mean, so sometimes we may cry because oh we are so privileged to spend our eternity with god forever and ever so that's maybe the reason that we are crying that but you know we understand that some of the scholars are saying that uh, 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 the, the the wiping of our tears would happen before we uh, get into heaven because there is no pain and a, and a, and a need of grieving in heaven anyways one thing is sure that we will be enjoying with the lord for ever whatever it may be whether we cry or whether we don't cry or something everything there is a solution for everything okay if we are crying there with a with a with a with a small reason when god's presence will be there to wipe out all the tears from our eyes and if we are crying with the, the joy that we are privileged we got the privilege to spend eternity with god in in the new city or in heaven so that would be a reason that we are uh, with the tears are coming from our eyes that may be the reason and the the next thing the next point is i mean there is no death there is no death and there is no mourning there is no crying there is no pain okay there is no death there is no mourning there is no crying there is no pain listen so these are the things that there is no 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 death no mourning no crying no pain because there is no need of all these things everything is over everything is new and we are with god there is no satan there is no sin there is no influences of satan or sin or world because we are in the new heaven new earth and new jerusalem city so there is no death there is no mourning there is no crying there is no pain but what is that city this city is a holy city these all things are in that chapter 21 okay so i am not going to read all those portion because of the lack of time okay. this the city is going to be a holy city and the city is going to be a glorious city glorious city okay we cannot explain we cannot explain we cannot imagine the 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 glorious situation of that new jerusalem city okay and again it says that brilliance like costly stone brilliance like costly stone okay and it has a great and high wall it has a great and high wall and it has 12 gates and it has 12 angels that's what justin was saying you know the importance of 12 in in this chapter you know importance of 12 means you know uh, there are many times uh, we return about the 12 12 12 and and uh, we you, we can assume that the 12 is a is a is a, a symbol of perfection you know jesus christ was choosing uh, 12 disciples and there were 12 tribes eh? and all those things okay so it it could be um, it could be uh, a men to understand that i mean 12 is a is a is a is a uh, number of perfection so that may be the reason anyway you know we understand that there is there is it, it has a great and high wall it has a brilliance like a costly stone and it is a, it is a holy city it is a glorious city and there is no death there is no mourning there is no crying there is no pain now when we think about the toll gates and toll angels and all those things you know the great and the high wall and toll gates and toll angels indicates the safety and the separation of the saints of god who are living inside the city okay so the safety and the separation of the saints of god living in the city that is the meaning of the 12 gates and the 12 angels and all those things and great and high wall is there okay so that is the meaning of that okay so especially on this concept you know uh, some scholars are believing that there will be people living outside the new jerusalem city or on the new earth and they will not be in a in a, in a, in a physical body and that also is a is a controversial topic 
Okay, so when we when uh, when I was asking that question, um, uh, remember that Jay sister was saying that okay, there will be people staying or there will be people living outside the city of Jerusalem, outside the city of Jerusalem. Okay, the meaning is you know there will be there will be you know the, some of the uh, Bible scholars are arguing that there will be somebody there will be some people living outside the New Jerusalem city. Okay, we know that there is New Jerusalem, sorry, New Heaven. New earth is there, but this new Jerusalem city is a hanging, just like a hanging city coming down from heaven. Okay, and there is a new earth is there, but it could it could be said that there will be somebody living in that in that new earth also without a physical body, without a physical body. Okay, so we are not looking in, into that portion more because it is a controversial topic and we cannot make a conclusion for it because of the uh, lack of the Bible verses about that point. You know, especially when we consider Revelation chapter 21, verse 24. Okay, Revelation chapter 21, verse 24, uh, uh, I, as, we, as we studied, it is written, the nations will walk by its light and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Okay, so the question is, will there be nations or will there be kings or people outside the city of New Jerusalem? Some believe there will be few people who believed in Jesus Christ during the time of millennial kingdom. Okay, so there will be people believing in Jesus Christ during the time of millennial kingdom, the thousand year of kingdom. Okay, so there will be people believing in Jesus Christ and accepting Jesus as their savior during the time of the millennial kingdom. But in that day, in, in, in the period of millennial kingdom, the church, the New Testament church is already taken to heaven. Okay, and they came back to rule over the rule of the nation. Okay, so they will be with Jesus Christ. At the same time, there will be people in the millennial kingdom and those people, many of them will re receive Jesus as their king. And they will say, no, Jesus is the king, especially the Jewish people. The Jewish people during the time of the millennial kingdom, they will understand, they will understand. And they are there just after the seven year of great tribulation. So those days in the millennial kingdom, these Jewish people will understand, oh, this, this is the real king and this is the real Lord. Jesus Christ is the real Messiah and they will receive Jesus. Okay, But they will be there and they will be living in the new earth also. It is said that it is assumed that those people, those who are getting salvation during the time of the millennial kingdom, they will be living in the new earth. And they may be having a physical body, but they will not be able to, they, are, they will not be able to do sin because there is no Satan to influence them to do sin. Okay, so if there is no Satan, we read in chapter 20, uh, chapter 20, uh, verse, um, yeah, chapter 20 already we read that um, the Satan and his all his armies and power, everybody will be uh, 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 thrown into the into the lake of fire. So during this time, during the time of the uh, new heaven or the new Jerusalem city, these people will be there at the same time, at the same time, when they cannot do any sin. They cannot do any sin because Satan is not there. Satan is bound. Okay, Satan is not there. But Satan cannot influence these people. There is no sin at all in those days. Especially in Revelation chapter 20, verses 7 to 9, we see there that there will be a war okay, at the end of the millennial kingdom. Okay, chapter uh, 20, 20, yeah, chapter 20, verses 7 to 9, it is very clearly, it is written that there will be a war at the end of the millennial kingdom. And in that war, a group of people okay, uh, will not be joining with the Antichrist, will not be joining with the Antichrist. And there will be kings and nation, maybe national leaders will be there among these people. And that could be the meaning of Revelation chapter 21 verse 24. That means there will be, and it is assumed, and we, we can just believe that there will be some people living in the new earth also, new earth also, okay? While we, the people of God, while the believers are inside the new Jerusalem city. That could be the reason that it says that this city is having 
uh, uh, 12 gates and uh, 12 angels are there and all those things, okay? And there is a great high wall also. There is a great and high wall also, okay? This, this could be the reason that uh, we can understand that uh, according to the chapter 21, verse 24, uh, there will be some nations or kings or people outside the city of uh, Jerusalem, new city of Jerusalem. Um, and um, uh, the next uh, next one is, uh, okay, there will be names of 12 tribes, okay? There will be names of 12 tribes and 12 foundation stones will be there. And also names of 12 apostles also will be there, okay? So these are the specialities of 12, 12, 12, as Justin said. Hmm? Names of 12 tribes will be there. 12 foundation stones will be there. Names of 12 apostles will be there. These all things indicates that, or these statements are indicating that the presence and the representation of the Old Testament saints and the New Testament saints also will be there inside the New Jerusalem city. That means in the New Jerusalem city, some people believe that only the New Testament believers will be there. Okay. Only the New Testament believers will be there in the New Jerusalem. Some people believe that. But according to this portion, according to these verses, we can understand that there will be the presence and the representation of the Old Testament saints and also the New Testament saints. So we all will be there inside the New Jerusalem city. That is the meaning of that. And we are going to the next point. The next point which is mentioned there is the, the shape of that city. Okay, we are coming to that point. The shape of that city will be a square shape. A square shape, okay, we understand what is that. Okay, especially in those verses um, in, uh, in, 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 in um, yeah, verses 16, 17, uh, and uh, the following verses, we can see that um, the shape of that uh, a city will be a square shape and the length, width, height will be equal, okay? The length will be equal, width will be equal, and height will be equal. That means we understand from that verse, particular verse that the measurement and equality and square shape indicates the perfection of the city, the perfection of the city. That means the length is same, the width is same, the height is equal. Everything is equal and same. That shows about the the equality of the people, those who are staying inside the city, and also the perfection of the city, the perfection of the city, a beautiful city. It's going to be a beautiful city or a brilliant city, okay, glorious city. So it will be a perfect city also. But if it is going to be a, uh, to be a, an, an, an actual city, then the total calculated dimension will be uh, it is it is counted as uh, 120 122 crores acres 122 crore, crore acres will be there if it is an actual city okay so some people believe that this city is going to be an actual city but some people believe that okay this city is going to be a spiritual city there is nothing actually there okay but if it is an actual city then the total calculated dimension of uh, that city will be uh, 122 crore acres. That means 1,500 mile length will be there. 1,500 mile length will be there. 1,500 mile width will be there. 1,500 mile height also will be there. That means it's going to be uh, going to be uh, 30 times bigger than the present dimensions of the world population of 800 crores. It is believed that there are 800 crores population now all over the world. Hmm? So according to this measurement, according to this measurement, you know, the uh, five, uh, 1, 000, uh, 1,500 mile uh, length, 1,500 mile width, and 1,500 uh, mile height, that means it's going to be 30 times bigger than the present dimension of the worldly population of 800 crores. That means it could accommodate all the saints from all the dispensations, okay? All the saints from all the dispensations. You know, I think uh, the tallest building of the world is uh, uh, in, in, in Dubai, okay, right? In Dubai, you know, which has, uh, 
it has, I think, 828 meters high. Hmm? So the, those things are not in your screen, right? Okay. So so the biggest, the tallest, uh, the, the, the tallest uh, building uh, uh, all over the world is uh, in, in Dubai, I think. Uh, it is 828 meters high. Okay. And it has uh, 163 stories or floors are there. Okay. 163 floors are there. Then can you imagine a building or can you imagine a city which has 1,500 mile length, 1,500 mile width and 1,500 mile height? Think about that. You know, the, the, the tallest building now is 828 meters only height. 828 meters. Now this is 1,500 mile height. Miles. This is mile. This is not a feet or square feet or something. This is miles. Okay. So think about or imagine how great it would be. Okay. And again, you can see that the foundation adorned with precious stones. Next is characteristics of the city is the foundation adorned with precious stones. It is going to be a, a, a precious thing. Okay? It is going to be a precious thing. Okay, Foundation stones. The foundation adorned with precious stones and there is no temple. There is no temple. In, in chapter 21, verse 22, it says that there is no temple because the Lord God, the Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. Verse 22, it says that. I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb are its temple. Okay. Again, as uh, Aksa said, there is no sun, there is no moon. Because glory of God has illuminated it. And its lamb is the lamb. Its lamb, L-A-M-B, is the lamb, L-A-M-B. Okay. Read uh, maybe chapter 21, verse 23. Elsa, 21, verse 23. Um, and the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and its lamp is the lamb. And 22 verse 5 also. Okay. And night will be no more. There will, there will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Uh, that means in the, in the new city of Jerusalem, there is no need of? moon there is no need of sun because the glory of god god himself will be eliminating that and the lamb of god will be the lamb of that city again it says that no night in new jerusalem there is no night in new jerusalem because always there will be light and it's going, it's going to be shining the new jerusalem is going to shine like anything so there is no need of there is no need of sun and moon, and there is no night also in New Jerusalem. And again, when we go to uh, uh, chapter 22, uh, uh, verse 1, you can see that there is a river of the water of life. There is a river of the water of life. Where? In the middle of the street, in the middle of the street of the New Jerusalem city, chapter 22, verse 1. Okay, That shows we will not be lacking anything in heaven. We will not be lacking anything but going to be there with full satisfaction. When, when we are there in the New Jerusalem city, there will be a river of water of life. That means we are not going to lack anything, but everything will be there. Everything will be there. The full satisfaction will be there. That's the speciality of the New Jerusalem city. Again, the speciality is a tree of life will be there. A tree of life will be there. And also, 12 kinds of fruit will be there. A tree of life will be there. 12 kinds of fruit will be there. And the leaves of those trees as medicine can be used as a medicine. The leaves of trees as medicine, it, that all things comes in uh, chapter 22. Okay, The leaves of the trees will be as medicine. There is no curse. There is no curse. And also, throne of God and of the Lamb will be there. Throne of God and the Lamb will be there. And also, there will be worshipping, always worshipping, always worshipping. And another thing is, absence of sinners and presence of saints. Absence of sinners and presence of saints will be there. 
okay? That means there is no sinners in the new Jerusalem, but there will be the saints of God. Only the saints of God will be there. There is no other sinners in the, in the uh, city of Jerusalem, especially when you read uh, 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 chapter 21, verse 8, and also chapter 22, verse 15. Let us go to that portion. Maybe uh, First of all, you read Revelation chapter 21, verse 27. 21, verse 27. Revelation chapter 21, verse 27? Yes. Okay. But, not, not, but nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does it is de what is detestable or false, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Okay, these people are not there in the, in the, in the city of Jerusalem. Okay, the, uh, there, is no, there is no unclean there. No one who practices abomination and those who are lying, okay, shall ever come into it. But only those suits whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life will be there. Even in uh, uh, chapter 21, verse 8 and 22, verse 15, you can see that when there are various groups of people that they are absent in the New Jerusalem. They are absent in the New, New Jerusalem. I mean, uh, who are those people? You know, it is very clearly says that in uh, uh, 21, verse 8 and also 22, verse 15. It says that the fearful people, the unbelieving people, the corrupted people, the murderers, the sexually immoral people, the scorsers, the sorcerers, okay, the idolaters, and all the lying people, all these people are outside the city, will be in the lake of fire. All these group of people will be outside the city. That means they will be in the lake of fire. That is another atmosphere. Okay, but we understand we will be all in the New Jerusalem city. So these are the these are the main and various characteristics of the New Jerusalem city. But we know one thing that Jerusalem means city of peace, right? City of peace is the meaning of Jerusalem or seat of peace, city of peace or foundation of peace. That that is the meaning of the word Jerusalem. Even though the city is known as the city of peace. The history shows that only a few years Jerusalem was in peace. Eh? Jerusalem is the place known for war and rebellion and bloodshed in history past. We, we have many other evidences to prove that Jerusalem was always in danger. Okay? That it, it had uh, many times it, it was going through the war and rebellious, rebellion was there, bloodshed was there in the history. Everything happened in the history. But the name, the meaning of the of the uh, word Jerusalem is city of peace, but there was no peace. There is no peace at all now. Also, okay, it is called as a seat of peace, but there is no seat of peace in the Jerusalem in this present Jerusalem now. Okay, we know that the history of Jerusalem in the is is the history of the people of Israel. The history of Jerusalem is the history of people of Israel. But we believe that the present city of Jerusalem will be destroyed one day, right? The present city of Jerusalem will be destroyed one day and the new earth and new heaven will be formed and the new city of Jerusalem will come down from heaven, which is made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. Amen. And we, the believers, the true born again Christians who are washed with the precious blood of Jesus Christ will live with the Lord forever and ever. This is going to happen. I mean, that means we are not waiting for the, for, we are not waiting for the, I mean, earthly Jerusalem, but we are waiting for the heavenly Jerusalem to come down from heaven. Hallelujah. How many of you are getting ready for that? I mean, so we believe that in the present city of Jerusalem will be destroyed. One day it is going to be destroyed. That is going to happen no sooner. And the new earth will come. The new heaven will come. I mean, the new earth and new heaven and new city of Jerusalem will be coming down from heaven. And, and it, it says in 21 verse 2, it says that it is coming down from heaven just like a bride, just like a bride adorned for her husband. And we believe that we true believers will be there. We Christians will be there forever and ever because we are washed with the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And especially in Revelation chapter 21 verse 4. Revelation chapter 21, verse 4, it is very clearly says that he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall 
there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. Hallelujah. What a, what a, what a, what a great and tremendous and amazing I mean, situation it could be. I mean, so when we are living together in the new Jerusalem city, this is going to happen. I mean, our, I mean all the tears will be wiped out from our eyes. I mean, there is no death. There is no more sorrow. There is no more mourning. There is no more crying. There is no more pain. Amen. Hallelujah. And everything, everything will be passed away. And I mean, we will, we will, will be there enjoying with the Lord forever and ever. Hallelujah. So this evening, let us all, I mean, commit ourselves with the mighty hand of God and let's um, let's pray together so that oh God, I mean, help us, oh God, to be there in the new Jerusalem city, oh God. I mean, I mean, cleansing ourselves and I mean, I mean washing ourselves with the blood of Jesus Christ. And and there is no more sorrow, there is no more death, there is no more curse, and there is no more morning hallelujah let us all close our eyes in the presence of god before i mean before concluding uh, with a word of prayer i would like to read i mean maybe uh, sing that one malayalam song which is related to this that is the salem pure chen cheerna naal ha etra modame i mean endana kannu neer illa avide dukka vilabangalum illa anga nitya yugam ulla sandosha naalinai ullamo vaanchikkune hallelujah kannu neer illatha oru naattilekku nammal yathra cheyukayana so we are looking forward for a for a for a particular place the new city where there is no tears where there is no i mean pain where there is no sorrow i mean let us all look forward for that city and that is i mean prepared enough for us and it is coming down, down from heaven i mean idu swargathil ninnu i mean stotram irangi varuna oru 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 city aayittu namukku kaanan sadikkunu adinu vendam kaathirikkam karthavinte karangalilekku elpichu namukku paadi devathe stuthichu vendam namukku prarthichu avasanipikkam hallelujah shalampure chenna विश्रम वीट चेरमो शालपूर चेर मोदे विश्र 